So just recently at Gamescom, a report came out from Eurogamer discussing the next generation of Nintendo Switch hardware. And at this particular Gamescom event, there was some demonstrations, at least allegedly reported on by Eurogamer, that discussed the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild running at 4K60 via DLSS on the new hardware. Now, to be very clear, this particular demonstration was done behind closed doors to developers, and it was there really just to kind of show off what type of power and performance you would come to expect developing games on new Nintendo hardware. But it did get me wondering about current Nintendo Switch hardware. Is it actually possible to push The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on existing Switch hardware via overclocking to run at 60 frames per second? And if so, what kind of clocks are we talking about? Well, I did exactly this demonstration with my Mariko modded OLED revision of the existing Nintendo Switch, and the results here may surprise you. Now, of course, for this, we need to resort to overclocking. Now, standard disclaimer about overclocking. I always kind of put this in my video pretty early on. Do not overclock your Switch unless you know exactly what you're doing. If you mod your Switch and take it online, you're probably going to get your Nintendo account banned. If you overclock for long periods, you risk causing irreparable damage to the hardware. And in general, I don't run my Switch overclock for very long before setting it back to stock. This is really for experimentation and research purposes. And I might add, we need to do some quite extreme overclocking. In fact, my V1 Switch, which is also known as the Arista model, can't be pushed far enough to reach a lock 60 FPS. And the simple reason is that there are upper limits in how far you can push a V1 Switch, specifically GPU and memory clocks. Now, while tools exist, such as SysClock and the newer 4i for overclocking tool suite, it does allow you to push clocks much higher than before. Simply put, the V1 switch runs too hot, and at that kind of level of overclocking, we run into many stability issues. So for this, as they say, we need to go deeper. And we're using my modded OLED switch that's running the newer Mariko Revision chipset. Not only can be pushed further, it also runs cooler and has a longer battery life. In fact, if you look at the updated documentation for the overclocking tool known as 4i Fur, you can overclock as high as 2.4 GHz for the CPU, which is a significant increase over the stock clocks, 1.5 GHz for the GPU, again a significant boost, and as high as 2.5 GHz for the memory clock. So this is quite significant. Now, the memory clocks themselves will vary per console. Now, just as an interesting thing, the 4i for documentation says it can go as high as 2.4 gigahertz on the memory clocks, but even on my Mariko Revision chipset, I can push my memory clocks to as high as 2.5 gigahertz. And this level of overclocking is simply not possible on a V1 Arista model switch, at least in my experience. Your mileage may vary and someone out there may have been able to push their V1 switch this high, but in my experience, I can't get to these levels of numbers. And it's this kind of area, this level of numbers that we're looking for in order to get a 60 FPS locked experience. Okay, so let's get right down to some testing. As you can see, we're running a Nintendo Switch OLED model in handheld mode. Now, remember when we're talking about handheld mode, the stock GPU is running at 460 megahertz. The CPU is fixed at one gigahertz. It doesn't matter if you're running that in handheld or in docked mode and 1.33 gigahertz for the memory clocks. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is uncap the frame rate with a simple modification to the game. And we already know from many, many hours of overclocking tests that in general, raw CPU clocks is not really the culprit when it comes to games like Breath of the Wild. We rarely see anything kind of get better performance in that mode, it really happens when we open up the GPU and more importantly, the memory clocks to really help with that limited switch bandwidth. So with a moderate CPU clock to say 1.4 gigahertz and by pushing the GPU clocks to 1.1 gigahertz and then finally opening up the memory clocks to a staggering 2.5 gigahertz, which is an almost one gigahertz boost there alone, we can see that Breath of the Wild indeed locks at 60 frames per second. Now, as mentioned, the cooler and longer battery life of the Mariko chipset means that we're only really seeing a power draw here of about 7.5 to 7.8 watts. And pretty good temperatures, I might add, 
at around 48 degrees Celsius. Now, I do want to give you a quick disclaimer here that we're only running the game at the beginning areas. We're not running in Kakariko Village, which I do know has some significant performance stresses that does tax the game. But overall, this is looking pretty good. Now, battery life, of course, is reduced in this mode, but I did play for about an hour or so, and I still had around 30% of battery life left, and the game ran rock solid with no issues or crashes. Now, of course, in dock mode, things are a little different, and trying to get Breath of the Wild running natively at 1080p, 60 frames per second, is something that I was just not able to do. The only way that I could get a consistent 60 FPS in dock mode was to force the docked resolution back to 720p and basically use the same clocks as before. Now pushing it to 900p and maxing the GPU clocks to 1.5 gigahertz did run better and I did get 60 FPS in some areas, but there was signs of slowdown. And when you do uncap the frame rate in Breath of the Wild, anything that doesn't run at 60 will drop down to 30 immediately and you'll have this kind of slow motion kind of um, you know, action that, that happens and you can immediately tell that the game has kind of dropped to 30 FPS. So yes, we can indeed run Breath of the Wild at 60 FPS on existing Switch hardware, albeit with some extreme overclocking. But does this give us any clues as to what we should expect from next-gen hardware specifications? Well, we have heard the rumors of the Tegra 239 SoC and some other things, but no one can really be sure as to the clock speeds that we can expect, the kind of the raw performance we can expect from the new hardware. Now, if Breath of the Wild is any indication, and there indeed was a demo running at 60 FPS, we can see that the memory bandwidth needs to be significantly increased so we can push those memory clocks to where we need to be. I would expect to see something around the 1.5 to 1.8 gigahertz as far as the GPU clocks. Now, for the CPU clocks, this is going to be where I expect Nintendo won't be as aggressive as people think. I'm probably expecting a moderate increase to around two gigahertz. Now, of course, people will say this is still a quite generous upgrade, but you have to remember that the Switch itself is kind of running down clocked and you can push the Tegra X1 to two gigahertz with really out any issues at all. But one thing that Nintendo obviously is very concerned about is battery life and as a great kind of example as, as to what, what that means here in this scenario is take a look at the power draw when we run Breath of the Wild at 60 at 1.5 gigahertz as compared to two gigahertz. You can see we're going from 7.8 watts to around 12 watts as far as its draw. So my expectation is that Nintendo won't push those CPU clocks as much as people think and simply because they want to make sure and maintain that really good battery life. Now, I do expect to see that the new SoC will provide more CPU cores for developers to use. And I think the target here is to get good frame rates at games that run either at 720p, 900p, or even 1080p, and then let the kind of the magic of DLSS kind of handle the heavy lifting of reconstructing those images and having them running at 4K. And of course, DLSS is the secret weapon of the new Nintendo hardware. And if it's executed on well, and look, I think it's going to be, then DLSS is going to be a game changer for all game consoles going forward. And this is going to be the first time that we see it. But let me know what you think about this interesting experiment I did with Breath of the Wild. It's absolutely incredible that it does run at 60 FPS on the Switch. This is something that I never really expected to see happen. I did. I have seen reports of people running it at 60, but kind of running it and setting it up yourself is, is quite amazing to see. And it's going to be very transformative if we do actually see a new version of Breath of the Wild running on new hardware that's sold at retail running at 60 FPS. But we're going to leave it here for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.